Hi, I'm Barrett. And I'm Brandon. And we are Bionic, Bionic Fitness. Fitness. Today we wanted to teach you about a really important exercise that we do with almost all of our clients in some way or other, right? And that we do ourselves all the time. Absolutely. Yeah, this is called a deadlift. I know some people mm -hmm. are scared of it, but it is basically a hip hinge pattern uh, and something that we do all the time, right? Do you want to talk about a hip Absolutely. hinge? Absolutely, yeah, yes. Perfect. So a hip hinge pattern, which also includes the squat, is an instinctual movement that all humans are born with. You'll see uh, toddlers doing it instinctually all the time when they squat down to pick something up yeah um, or uh, a sit to stand movement whether it be at a desk mm -hmm. uh, in the bathroom uh, in and out of a car or even walking upstairs is that half pattern yes. we use this every single day right so this is why it's really important for us to strengthen that pattern and make sure it's done effectively especially as our clients age or have mobility issues absolutely yeah another important reason for the deadlift is that is a full body movement your whole body is engaged and working throughout the whole exercise which is is also super great for for uh, training your whole body to move properly. Absolutely. This is, uh, when done properly, a really good postural correction uh, too. Um, and so we've mm -hmm. talked to before in our videos about postural correction and how it's not just about aesthetics, it's about uh, joint function, nerve function, and, uh, and dealing with compression and uh, compensation patterns. So we wanna make sure that those are all nice and clean uh, and good in your body. You got it, that's yeah. absolutely. Absolutely it. Oh, yes. And also the, the most basic thing, when you go to pick something up, uh, we've heard lift with your legs and not with your back, right? Um, yes. Not everybody necessarily knows what that means, but we're going to tackle that today. Whenever you pick something up, this is a deadlift or hip hinge pattern. You got it. That's mm -hmm. exactly it. Yes. Yep. Okay. Shall we talk about some safety, which is also super important in the deadlift and part of the reason why some people are um, feel shy about doing deadlifts on their own. Absolutely. So uh, deadlifts, um, the most important safety piece in a deadlift is to make sure that you have a flat back, right? Mm -hmm. um, we talked before about um, the spine and arch and loading it up. Um, I'm going to give you a, another little demo. We've done it before. I'll do it again. Yeah. Uh, okay. So if you take a look at here, if my fist is Barrett's pelvis and the skewer that I have is his spine, we want them to move together, right? So Barrett, if you can bend over, I'm going to demo this quickly with you. His spine is moving with his pelvis as a unit. And stand on up. Right. And so if, if Barrett does this and his pelvis doesn't move and his spine does and he goes to bend over, that's going to create a flat back and also create pressure on that spine to the point where it breaks. Right? Yeah. So the peak of that arch, which for Barrett is right about here, is where the majority of that load is, uh, is being put, right? If he flattens his back out, that load all of a sudden comes down into his glutes. His glutes are a large muscle that uh, are responsible for hip extension, and they're so big that they're able to take that pressure, right? That's what they're meant for, uh, for doing, right? Your vertebrae or your spine is not meant for that, right? Um, so in this position, one, of, uh, one extra thing in terms of keeping that flat back is that if Barrett lets his shoulders push forward, that creates this rounded back, right? And if he focuses just on pulling them together, that flattens his back out really nicely too. So uh, the deadlift is also uh, secondarily for the back or for the posterior chain, right? So Barrett's not only pulling his shoulder blades together, he's also pulling his shoulder blades down away from his ears and he should feel it right here in the lat. Do you feel that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Just below your armpit, there's a large muscle that crosses the back called the latissimus dorsi or the lat that we want to engage in that deadlift, right? Um, yeah, yeah, how'd it feel? That was great, yeah. Awesome, okay. I could feel the shift from my um, from my up my back when I was rounded into my glutes when I straightened everything out. Perfect. Another point in terms of a flat back, we want to try and make sure that we've talked about uh, in our cervical spine video, neck positioning, right? Mm -hmm. So when Barrett bends over, what we don't want him to do is be that narcissist. He's staring at himself in the mirror. <laughs> he needs to stop it. He knows he's good looking. But I'm so pretty. I know. You see, I told you. All right. So what he's going to do is he's going to look down, right? And you know what? We're going to, we're going to focus on on his lower back while he kinks his neck. So look up. Do you see how that created a little extra uh, dip in the back and put it down? 
and that flattens his back out too, right? So movement through the cervical spine, uh, A, will affect the movement through his lower, lower back, and B, will interrupt the nervous system and the muscular contraction below his neck, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so a couple cues that I like to use with my client is at the bottom of the deadlift, mm -hmm. uh, Barry, I want him to look at the ground, so he's got a little gap in the neck, everything's nice and flat, and then as he comes up, He's going to look for it, and then he can look at his beautiful face in the mirror. Aww. There he is. Good morning, sunshine. <laughs> All right, let it down. And as he lets it down, he's really making sure that those shoulder blades stay together as to not round. I think in the eccentric or lowering phase of this exercise is when people tend to let go and round through and the back. Around, yeah. yeah. And we talked about in the cervical spine video, interruption of that, that nerve pathway can really cause muscles not to fire or misfire. And we don't want that, right? Especially in such a big movement like the deadlift where we want so many muscles engaged. This is a full body exercise, exactly. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so to else? set Barrett up for a proper deadlift, I think yes. what we'll do is we'll set his feet right underneath the bar. I think one mistake that I see is people step too far back and then when they lift that bar, it swings back and smashes them in the shins, yep. which is never nice, right? <laughs> I only do that to Barrett when he's done something wrong. <laughs> just kidding, I don't do that. <laughs> uh, okay, um, so his feet are nice and centered underneath the bar. He's going to grab that bar nice and wide. And the reason why we want it on the wider side is so that his knees have somewhere to go. We don't want the knees to collapse inwards on a deadlift. We want them to push out so that those hip muscles are stabilizing the hips and everything is nice and engaged, right? Um, also, while he's doing that, he's just making sure that he is flat in the feet. His uh, the knuckle of his big toe is pushed into the ground, as well as the the same on the pinky and the heel. So little suction cups with his feet is what I like to say, right? Um, so he's going to pull his shoulders back. He's going to squeeze. Give me a tiny little crunch to his abs. See how he's already lifting? Because that's the right cue. That's how he feels. Do you feel your, uh, your glutes loaded? My glutes want to work. Perfect. So come on up, and you're extending forward through the hips, right? I like to tell people to think more shoulder, shoulder back. Good. Oh, yeah. To think more about jutting the hips forward rather than standing up, right? Because this is uh, less about snapping the knees back, which when people stand up, they tend to snap the knees back. Instead, we're going to push the hips forward so that those glutes do the work. And you can see his are hard as rock. Do you see those working? <laughs> He's got good glutes. Yeah, baby. All right. So shoulders back, ease it down, abs nice and tight. Great, perfect. Um, a couple things that we might see too that we want to take a look at is just joint angles. So do you want to get back into position here? Sure. I didn't say you could move. I'm getting sweaty. <laughs> I know, it's good. So the optimal position is hips kind of uh, as open as you can, right? So if your hips are too high, this isn't necessarily terrible or wrong. It definitely puts pressure in uh, different areas, especially the hamstrings, which can be a part of a compensation pattern for the glutes. Or if it goes too low, this can be really hard on the quads and on the knees too, right? And we also don't want that. So optimal position is kind of a nice little zigzag um, with his chest up just a little bit. We don't want him to arch through the lower back when lifting his chest. When I say lift through the chest, I mean more so to open those hips up, right? And his whole torso will lift and not just his chest okay so come on up thrust when he's doing this we've got his neck is on just a little bit his shoulder blades are pulled together his lats are on his abs are nice and engaging and supporting his lower back his glutes are fired right up his quads are on a little bit and he's thinking about standing nice and tall right mm -hmm. and then lean back down good awesome Looks good. Anything to add to that? Woo, no, that's all good. Awesome. Um, another thing that we want to talk about too is the, the lockout at the top, which Brandon mentioned, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Keeping that tuck and not letting that lower back work. Brandon, why don't you demonstrate this without any weight? Sure. We're going to demo this with no weight just because an anterior pelvic tilt in a deadlift and loading that lumbar spine can be really harmful or dangerous and mm -hmm. we don't want aggravated lower backs. So we don't all. want you to have it either. So we're not going to do this with weight. Right. So, um, if you're prone to an anterior pelvic tilt or functionally you have one, it's going to look a little something like this. Yes, yeah, so you can see that big curve through Brandon's lower back here. That's part and how his pelvis is dumped forward. If you think 
of your pelvis as a bucket, right? His, his pelvis is tilted forward and that bucket full of water, if you imagine it, is dumping all that water forward, right? We want to actually level that bucket out. So Brandon, tuck underneath and level out that, that pelvis and lower back. And as you can see, it's nice and flat right now. But like Brandon mentioned, some people are prone to not using the pelvis all the way up to the top, right? Not keeping that alignment. What'll happen if you show me, again, Brandon, that curve in the lower back, and then move forward like you would do a deadlift, right? Yeah, so what that means is we talked about the pelvis and the spine moving together. What that means is right about here, my pelvis has frozen and mm -hmm. stopped working, right? And my back starts to keep going while my pelvis is doing nothing. That can be part of a problem with tension through the quadriceps and through the hip flexors, and of course through that lower back. Sometimes it's just a matter of knowledge and control though. So As well. most people can actually make sure that their pelvis is able to keep moving mm -hmm. and not freeze as they arch upwards, exactly. right? What we don't want is that legally blonde bend and snap. Yeah. Right? Because you're gonna bend and snap your spine, so don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. If you can imagine that lower back with that curve and like Brandon um, demonstrated with the, the curved skewer, pressure on that curve in the lower back is again not good and can cause the injuries that we mentioned in earlier. So in our pelvic control video, we talk about that, um, that lockout. We don't call it a lockout there, but in this exercise, it's a lockout because you're at the top, you're tucking, you're squeezing. I can't go any farther because my abs are right engaged. My glutes are right engaged mm -hmm. too, right? I'm giving just a tiny little crunch through my abs. So I'm not here. Exactly. I'm here. That lower abdominal engagement is super important in those uh, deadlifts. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So don't be nervous of the deadlift. It's a super important exercise and it can be a fantastic one in terms of mobility, strength, postural correction, mm -hmm. and long-term living, right? If you're doing, um, if you're doing this, we highly encourage you to get someone to come and look at you, watch this video a couple times, learn um, the proper movements as well. Start nice and light. You don't have to weigh yourself down. Start by just learning that movement, that hip hinge movement, right? Where you push those hips back and push them forward again. Yeah, if you've never done a deadlift by yourself, um, be really, really careful because you can cause a disc bulge, a disc uh, herniation, hernia, herniation mm -hmm. um, a slipped disc. A hernia um, in general in that groin area. There's all kinds kinds of injuries that can come from this. So mm -hmm. make sure you have somebody who knows what they're doing, a professional trainer to come up and help you with yes. that deadlift so that you don't hurt yourself, right? Yep. Once you have it, do it. Do it all the time because we're using it all the time, strengthen it. Start small with light little uh, hip hinge exercises and slowly work your way up into a weight that's a little mm -hmm. heavier and more comfortable, all right? Excellent. Um, yeah. But I think for us, that's about it for the deadlift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, happy deadlifting. Uh, keep those uh, uh, pelvises, those uh, glutes and lower backs nice and safe and strong. And well. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Man. And please follow us on social media. Check out our website. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or email us. And all of that will be listed in the description below. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Take care.